Okay, at this time, would all sergeants please start the recordings? Computer recording started. Started the cloud recording. Thank you. Backup is rolling. Thank you. And uh, Sergeant Bradley, with your opening statement, please. Okay. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's New York City Council vote on health. At this time, will all members please turn on your videos for verification purpose. Thank you, Chair. We may begin. Welcome, everyone. I'm thrilled that we're joined by our colleagues in the Health Committee, Councilmember Diaz, Councilmember Amprey Samuel, Councilmember Powers, Councilmember Barron, and Councilmember Brooks Powers, and also the sponsor of today's legislation, Councilmember Gibson, who we'll be hearing from in a moment. Uh, welcome, everyone. Today, we will be hearing proposed introduction 2042A, so if you're not hearing, we'll be voting on, a bill sponsored by Councilmember Gibson, which would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to post information about licensed midwives, including the services they offer and how to find them on the DOHMH website. More women in the United States die of pregnancy-related complications than in any other developed country, and the number of maternal deaths has been increasing. According to the Centers for Disease Control, the rate of maternity mortality in the U.S. has more than doubled since 1987, and data also shows that this trend has worsened in recent years. Each year, 700 to 900 American women and approximately 65,000, excuse me, seven to 900 American women die and approximately 65,000 suffer potentially mortal complications from pregnancy or childbirth related causes. Additionally, data shows that health inequalities significantly impact pregnancy outcomes. According to the CDC, black women in the US are three to four times more likely to die from complications related to pregnancy than white women. In particular, New York City and state have among the highest rates of maternal deaths in the country. In New York City, black women die at a rate of eight to 12 times more frequently than white women. This should horrify us. We must do more to address this inequity. Especially over the last year and a half, we've learned the lethal consequences of health inequities and unequal access to healthcare. We know that disproportionate impact that COVID-19 has had on black, Latinx and Native American communities. This impact has impacted pregnant and birthing people in particular. Pregnant women who are black and Hispanic are more likely to be disproportionately affected by the virus during pregnancy. And the virus has also impacted the ability of black, indigenous and other patients of color to receive adequate healthcare. With decreases in in-person appointments and reliance on telehealth services, discrimination in healthcare persists and decreases in prenatal care and postpartum follow-up lead to increased risk for maternal mortality and morbidity. The pandemic has also brought about a new risk factor for pregnant patients, isolation. Several studies have shown that doulas or other support persons during birth can improve outcomes for birthing people and their babies, especially for black patients and others who experience discrimination during birth but the pandemic led to many hospitals limiting the number of support people in delivering rooms, sometimes leaving mothers to deliver alone. Similarly, we know that possible solutions to address maternal mortality is the use of midwives. However, information about midwives can be difficult to find and navigate. And accordingly, those who would benefit most from these resources are often the least likely to utilize them. Introduction 2042A, would help address some of these disparities and would even the playing field by requiring the health department to make this information publicly available for all New Yorkers. I wanna thank the sponsor, council member Vanessa Gibson for her tireless work on this important issue. I also want to thank the countless advocates and impacted individuals who have worked so hard on this and who have shared their painful and personal stories with us to help us better understand the need to address this issue immediately. Finally, I wanna thank my colleagues on the health committee for being here today and the staff of the health committee 
Council's Sara Liss and Harbani Ahuja, Policy Analyst in Balkan, and Finance Analyst Lauren Hunt for their work on this legislation. I want to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Member Holden. I think we have got all the members. And so I can ask for the committee council to please call the vote. Sure, and we're actually gonna to turn to the bill sponsor. Oh, forgive me, forgive me, yes. Forgive me, Vanessa. Thank you, we definitely wanna hear from you, please. Council Thank you so much. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you, Chair Mark Levine and members of the Health Committee. Thank you so much for this opportunity this afternoon to speak about a very important bill, Introduction 2042, that will require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to post important information about licensed midwives, including all of the services they offer, how to find them, and also post it on its website. Last year, the City Council's Women's Caucus joined the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus in hosting a series of briefings with the New York State Department of Health, the New York City Department of Health about our doulas and midwives, as well as the important topic of Black maternal mortality and morbidity in our city. This resulted in a joint hearing, you remember, Chair, uh, last December with the Committees on Health, the Committee on Women and Gender Equity, and the Committee on Hospitals, in which we brought in the administration and pertinent stakeholders to further discuss this topic. It is an understatement to say that Black women in our city are in a maternal crisis. This is a state of emergency. Black women are eight to 12 times more likely than white women in the city of New York to die from maternal complications. And in my borough of the Bronx, nearly all of my community boards have severe maternal mortality rates much higher than the city's average. High rates of black maternal mortality and morbidity is truly a result of years, years of systemic racism, discrimination, and bias in the healthcare industry that unfortunately has contributed to the mistreatment and mishandling of black birthing individuals and patients, and it's simply unacceptable. Too many women have died as a result of this public health crisis. I wanna lift up the names of Shaeja Washington. She was a mother who gave birth and died during childbirth in Brooklyn, and a sister, Amber Isaac, who also died during childbirth in the Bronx. So many other women whose names we may or may not know died senselessly because of medical neglect. We cannot wait for yet another preventable death before we take action. Black women and Black birthing individuals deserve access to quality health care, patient-centered reproductive health care that is culturally sensitive to their needs and truly addresses many of their issues. Policymakers, healthcare professionals, elected officials, we all have a role to improve Black women's maternal health by expanding access to health coverage and information on midwives and doulas. There is data and research that proves that there's a substantial increase in midwife delivered interventions that could prevent maternal deaths and neonatal deaths. So intro 2042 on today's agenda is the first step in ensuring that birthing individuals have access to midwife information and removes all of the barriers that could prevent potential maternal complications. We know that there is much more work to be done to address this critical issue, but I hope my colleagues on the health committee will join me in voting on intro 2042. And certainly wanna thank my co-chair of the Women's Caucus, Chair Farrah Lewis, Chair Dharma Diaz, uh, Chair Helen Rosenthal, Chair Mark Levine, and Chair Carlina Rivera, and really all the members for your important attention to this. Black and Latino women deserve better. And this bill is a step forward in making sure that they have access to quality reproductive health care and health care justice in our city. Thank you so much, Chair Levine, and I look forward to working with all of you, my colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. And now I can ask our clerk to please call the vote. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is the May 26, 2021 Committee on Health vote on proposed intro 2042A. We'll start with Chair Levine. Vote well, aye. And Council Members Barron. I vote aye. Amprey Samuel. I vote aye. Holden. I vote aye. Powers. I vote aye. Diaz. I vote aye. 
Brooks Powers. I vote aye. Thank you. Chair Levine, by a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, uh, intro 2042A is adopted. That is wonderful. Congratulations, Councilmember Gibson and everyone on this important legislation. And this concludes our hearing. Thank you, everybody. I think we're going to hold the vote open for just a minute. Ah, uh, forgive uh, me. I, yes, we are. And we're waiting on two more members, is that correct? Or is it uh, just one? Council members Gibson and council member Diaz, would you please stay on for the general welfare vote? Sure, Mr. Clerk, we have uh, Councilmember Eugene. Welcome, Dr. Councilmember Eugene. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilmember Eugene, may we please have your vote on proposed intro 2042A? Uh, you're on mute, Councilmember. Uh, we can't hear you, shoot. Unmute. There we go. I say I put I. And I Wonderful. Want to thank, I want to thank Mr. Chair for your leadership on this issue. You are you have been in the forefront of everything, especially during COVID. You did a wonderful job. And to all the staff, you know, thank you for helping me get in because I had some issues with uh, the connection. Thank you so much. And I would I. Thank you so much, Council Member. You're very welcome. Chair Levine, okay. Chair Levine, the revised vote is eight in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions on intro 2042A. Great. Okay. So now we can conclude the hearing. Thank you, everyone. And congrats again to Councilmember Gibson on the unanimous passage of her bill out of the Health Committee. Thanks, everyone.